Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Welcome to my channel. Remember to like and subscribe. Now let's talk about radian measure. Radians are the other units that we use. So an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle is called a central angle. Every angle in standard form is a central angle, but you don't necessarily have to have the angle in standard form uh, or even in the XY coordinate system to be a central angle. It just has to have be an angle where its vertex is at the center of a circle, is a central angle. So what we mean by radian measure, so what do we mean? I should have defined an intercepted arc. Intercepted arc is talking about this arc right here that the central angle is facing, that it cuts out of the circle. The outer, like where the circumference of the circle is along the outside edge, that piece there. If we have one radian, that means that one radian is the measure of a central angle of a circle where the intercepted arc is the same length as the radius. Okay, so if you have a circle with a central angle with a vertex at the center and it has a radius of r, whatever size angle it takes to sweep out an arc that's also of size r, that angle there is said to be one radian in size. One radian because it faces one radius, right? One radius by the arc. <clears throat> and believe it or not, that's consistent regardless of which size circle you're talking about. You'll get the same size angle if you look at the angle that sweeps out one radius worth of the arc. Now, you might recall that the circumference of a circle is two pi times r, right? You remember seeing that formula before? The circumference of a circle is two pi times r. All right, so I'd like you to think of it this way. Pi is about three, right? So two pi is about six. So it takes about six radii to get around the circle. It's actually just slightly more because pi is a little bit bigger than three. So it's like you get six and then a little extra piece. So R will fit around here six times and then plus a little bit more. Okay. The circumference of the circle. So, so one radian is about, it's a little less than a sixth of the circle. The radian measure of any central angle of a circle is the length of the intercepted arc divided by the circle's radius. All right, so let's use uh, this information to answer example three. It says a central angle theta in a circle of radius six inches intercepts an arc of length 15 inches. What is the radian measure of theta? All right, so here's theta. We have a radius equal to six, and this is not proportionate, I know. The angle's not drawn properly, because it really should be bigger, right? Because it's got a 15 inch arc. <clears throat> but let's go back up to the statement we wrote down a little minute ago. The radian measure of a central angle of a circle is the length of the intercepted arc divided by the circle's radius. So we're going to take the length of the arc and we're going to divide it by the radius. So theta is going to be 15 inches divided by 6 inches, which I would reduce that down to what? 5 over 2. 5 over 2. Ah. <laughs> And notice that the inches, the units cancel out. Radians don't actually have any units. Sometimes we'll write the word radian to indicate that it is a radian, but in reality, they don't have any units because it's a ratio of inches to inches. So this is the measure of that angle. If there are no units indicated, it's radian. So for example, if I said theta equals 180 and alpha equals 180 with a little circle, those are two different angles, completely different, not equal, not the same. If you don't have a degree symbol, then it's radians, okay? So that's just a side note about notation and units. All right, so you do part B at your desk real quick. 
The central angle theta in a circle of radius 12 feet intercepts an arc of length 42 feet. What is the radian measure of theta? Okay, what's theta equal to? I mean, two. Okay, 42 oh. over 12 reduces to seven halves, you said, which is three. It's okay to give it a fraction <laughs> or a decimal as long as you don't round off. From now, let's talk about the special angles that we talked about before, but in radian measure. Because okay? whether we're talking about degrees or radians, we're still it's still the same situation, but we have to get comfortable doing either. So angles are measured, again, by determining the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. A complete rotation of the circle is considered 360 degrees. That is... 2 pi radians. Remember how we went all the way around the circle? We had, it had to be 6 and a little bit more of the radians, of the radius. Okay, so 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. A semicircle, then, is 180 degrees, or how many radians? Pi radians, that's right. And so just like before, we're going to focus on the top half of the circle, the 180 degrees, but we're going to think about radians. So when I'm doing multiples of 30 degrees, multiples of 30 degrees, we have six pi pieces. We already know that from before. What I would like to do is use that I know 180 degrees is pi, and that each one of these 30 degree pi pieces out of 180 degrees is what fraction? What is 30 over 180 reduced to? One sixth. One sixth. So 30 degrees in terms of pi would be a six. Well, first of all, zero is zero. Zero degrees is zero, right? 30 degrees is one sixth times pi although we usually write it as pi over six. 60 degrees would be two sixths of pi. However, if we reduce that, what would that be? 30. Pi over three. 90 degrees is what fraction of pi? Pi over two. That's right, it's three sixths of pi, or halfway to pi, which is pi over two. How many sixths is 120 going to be? How many sixths of the circle have we gone? One, two, three, four. Four sixths, right? Four sixths of pi would be two pi over three. How many sixths of pi is 150 degrees? We're going five pieces, right? We've gone five pieces around the circle. So it's five sixths of pi which is five pi over six is how we write that special and equal in rating. And then six six of pi brings us to pi. So if you want to label the radians that are multiples of 30 degrees, you're gonna break up the top half of the circle into six pieces and go one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six. One, six. One sixth of pi, two sixths of pi, three sixths of pi, four sixths of pi, five sixths of pi, six sixths of pi. And you get all the way around the circle. Just reduce it. All right. Now, what fraction of 180 is 45 degrees? A quarter. Okay, do you think you could use that information to label each of these angles in radians instead of degrees? Okay, write it down what you think it is real quick. I'll give you like 30 seconds. Write down what angles you think those are in radians, and then I'll give you the If you're watching at home, now's a good time to pause the video and test yourself. Then play the video when you think you have the answer or you want to see the result. Okay, so zero degrees we know is zero radians. What did you get for 45 degrees? Pi over four, very good. One fourth of pi is just pi over four. 90 degrees we already know is pi over two, but I want to show you that this is two fourths of pi, which is pi over two. This next one is what? 
Three fourths of pi, which is three pi over four. And then, of course, we have four fourths of pi, which is just pi. Okay, did you get those? All right, the more comfortable you are with those now, the easier it will be later. All right, you could also do the same thing using 15 degrees. And if you did it this way, you'd get all the angles, but again, you need to skip the ones that aren't special angles. What fraction of 180 is 15 degrees? How many times does 15 go into 180? 12, 12 times? 12. So 1, 12. Okay. So watch this. So we have a 0, and then we have 1 twelfth of pi, 2 twelfths of pi, 3 twelfths of pi, 4 twelfths of pi, um, 5 twelfths of pi, but again, that's not a special angle, 6 twelfths of pi, 7 twelfths of pi, not a special angle, 8 twelfths of pi, 9 twelfths of pi, 10 twelfths of pi, and 11 twelfths of pi, not a special angle, and then 12 twelfths. So to label all the special angles, they are going to be pi over 12, pi over 6, pi over 4, um, pi over 3, skip this one. Really, I should have skipped that one because we don't really think it's not a special angle. Uh, pi over 2, skip this one, not a special angle. Uh, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, what would this one be? 5 pi over 6, skip this one, and then 5. So in example 4 here, a special angle is given in radians. Find the degree measure. Draw a diagram showing the angle in standard position. Now, some of you may have learned a formula to convert this guy to this guy, but that's not how I want you to think of it for today. For today, I want you to think of multiples of 30 and multiples of 45. So what do I mean by that? Um, Okay, so for part A, we're going to do 5 pi over 6. So if I wanted to do 5 pi over 6, remember, look at the uh, denominator here. One, That's one thing. It's dividing pi, the top half of the circle, is being divided into 6 pieces. So we're talking about a multiple of what? 30, remember 30 degrees divides this up into six pieces. In other words, this is five times pi over six, and pi over six was, remember, 30 degrees. So we're gonna, but it, you don't even need to know that because you know that pi is a half of a circle, a semicircle, and we're dividing it into six pieces. We're dividing pi a semicircle into six pieces. And how many of those pieces do we have? Five of them. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And we know this must be where five pi over six ends. So when I draw my angle, so I have to draw my vertex, my initial side, and my terminal side. So if I asked you in which quadrant is 5 pi over 6, you would be able to say what? Third. Second quadrant. That's right. Okay, let's do part B. How is part B going to look different? Four pieces. That's right. Remember, this is going to be uh, dividing. Look at the denominator. We're going to have four pieces. So our semicircle is divided into four which means we're talking about multiples of how many degrees? 30 degrees or 45 degrees? 45, 45 degrees. And how many of uh, those pieces do we actually have? Three of them. We're going three quarters of the way to five. One, two. So when we draw three pi over four, we're going to have to place our vertex and draw our initial side and our terminal side. And that one is also in the second quadrant. And now we get to 2 pi over 3. We haven't talked about dividing the um, semicircle into just three pieces. But you can't. 
Yeah. What I did is I just rewrote the fraction as four over six. Right. That's the other alternative. Very good. So it's easier to think of it if we're going to be in the habit of looking at multiples of 30 degrees, it's easier to think of it as four pi over six. So if I do it that way, I get draw two on this side, two on this side. Okay, you got four of the pieces. One, two, three, four. So four pi over six would be, or two pi over three is how I should really write it because that's the reduced one. Two pi over three is gonna be here. But notice that is really two thirds. I mean, if you take this and instead divide it up into um, three even size pieces, you'd have this piece, this piece, and this piece. So it would be two of those three pieces. So whether you think of it as four of the six pieces or two of the three, it doesn't really matter. Okay, it's the same thing. All right, so any questions about drawing these angles? So multiples of 30, you have to divide it into six. Multiples of 45, or if I have to divide it into four. All right, so real quick, we have two minutes left, so put it on my computer. Uh, how can let's write these uh the three angles as very So 60 degrees, is that a multiple of of uh 30 or 45? 30. It's actually two times 30 degrees. And 30 degrees is pi over six. It divides the semicircle into six pieces. So this is really two times pi over six, which how would we produce that? Okay. Yeah, it's a third of the way of pi, which makes sense because 60 degrees is a third of 180, right? 60 degrees is a third of the semicircle. So it makes sense that it would be a third of pi, a third of the semicircle. Okay, how about 150? How can we write that one? Five times 30 degrees is five times pi over six. Very good. Five pi over six. How about 135 degrees? Three times 45? And 45 is pi over four. So we have three times pi over four is three pi over four. 135 degrees is three pi over four. All right, and 90, you can do either way. You can think of it as a multiple of 30, or you can think of it as a multiple of 45, and either way, you're gonna get one. Sorry, you can either think of it as um, three times 30 degrees is three times pi over six, which is pi over two, or you can think of it as two times 45 degrees, which is two times pi over four, which is also pi over four. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to my channel, Miss Earn Mathematics, for more math videos.